Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of the globe. And as you know this is the SWAM lecture series and the title being Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management and my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur. Uh, if you remember in the 25th lecture uh, for this series in the SWAM lecture series uh, Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management, we are discussing about SWAMs. And uh, I did mention time and again during the, uh, during the duration of the lecture that uh, we would consider and we did do one example in details. So, they were basically the concept where you wanted to consider and convert either an asset to a liability or liability to an asset. And the main focus at least for the examples which we discussed were basically to convert from a fixed interest rate to a floating one or vice versa. So, obviously, considering the asset was fixed you convert it into a floating or asset was basically floating you convert it into a fixed interest rate and similarly was the case for the liability. Now, the point for the asset uh, consideration was that you were getting some interest rate. So, there were some positive flows. and you were either facing a little bit high level of risk from the floating one converted into a fixed one or you faced a high level of risk from the fixed one you converted into a floating one. Similarly, in the liability case where you were to pay and the payments were being done in the floating concept where you were facing a little bit high level of risk, you converted that to, into a fixed and similarly, where you had a liability concept it was a fixed one uh, where the risk was high, you converted that into a floating. The other part which I did mention was basically the concept of trying to consider the currency swap. So, currency swap was basically that you faced uh, the risk on one currency, consider it was the US dollars and you convert it into an Indian rupees or vice versa. And there also the consideration would be from the asset or liability perspective. Now, whatever example which I discussed and I did go through the problem solution slowly, so that would be replicated in all the cases uh, where you had the liability for the um, uh, interest rate or the um, liability in the asset for the case of the uh, currency case. So, it can be just replicated going through the examples. Now, few of the important assumptions in, 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 the, in those, those um, considering, so for example, for the, um, this interest rate, you had the examples of asset liability fixed and floating. Similarly, for the currency one, the main focus was that initially you were dealing with the outside person, you means the organization was dealing with the outside agency. Then hypothetically they considered the two, two organizations came in contact with each other to, uh, do, to uh, swap their overall risk perspective, but that was not, uh, not the practical one uh, and the final case where we considered was a financial institution coming into the picture to take care of the risk perspective from both the parties. Now obviously in the process some amount of profit were to be taken by the FI and that was equally shared by both the parties A and B or the organization considering that they are on the same level, level playing field. Now, in, in the course of discussion, I was mentioning time and again that uh, the time duration was fixed and the notional amount of was fixed. And I did mention also that the main focus initially was basically on the amount of loss, but later on we will see that the word and I did mention that what time and again was the basically the risk perspective. So, risk is a, is a very general word I'm, which I am using. So, risk can be either in the monetary sense, risk can be from the perspective of variance, it can be from the perspective of standard deviation and all these risk measures. 
So, for this, uh, class, uh, this lecture 26th one, I will go a little bit fast where I will only consider the pictorial concept of trying to basically consider the combinations of forward and options. It has already been done uh, by drawing or making the, the payoff matrix, payoff table and drawing the diagram. So, I am not going to do it again, but I will just highlight the point that what we may, may mean by risk and these would be coming up later on in, in the second course where the main emphasis is a financial risk and obviously in this course where we encounter the concept of risk in, in, in the later part of a few of the lectures. Uh, I have mentioned about the concept of risk, but from the very general perspective that if you have the distribution for the returns as normal, then standard deviation or variance and other measure of risk would be the best measure, but as we consider different type of distributions for the returns for the financial, financial returns which are non-normal, how we can consider other forms of risk also. So, this is the 26th lecture uh, in the area of investment analysis and portfolio management. So, here in the lecture title of the lecture series, it will be pictorial one considering the risk reduction using the options and the forwards. So, now uh, the, 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 the considerations would be again the same thing forwards and, and the different combinations of the options, options call and, and the put considering the long call, short call and the long put and the short put. So, initially we only have one long forward. Okay. Um, I want to mention again without being repetitive that we will consider the examples by considering only single options or a single forward. Even though if you remember very clearly when we are doing the examples in the combinations of the forward and the, uh, and the options, after uh, showing you how the tables were made and how the diagrams were done for the combinations, we increase and considering different quantums of options, different quantums of forwards and how the overall payoff matrix or the payoff graph changes, I did highlight that also. So, initially coming back to this slide, initially we have a long forward. So, the long forward is given in, in the perspective that you have basically a strike price or the delivery price, we, I, we will continue utilizing the symbol of x or k and uh, k was basically being utilized for the case of the options and x was basically the variable symbol which was being utilized for the case of the forwards. So, so we had a long forward and the corresponding risk for the long forward is the area which is shown here. I will use the color see for example, red here even though I marked it as in pink color, but I will basically try to highlight using a lighter color so that you can understand. So, initially we have a long forward and the risk is as shown considering the prices will generally be on the downward trend. So, risk is basically the perspective where you think you will face a loss. So, you are more concerned about the loss rather than the profit. So, main emphasis throughout the discussion would be on the loss or downward or upward trend uh, movement of the prices considering that you can face uh, a risk either for increase of the prices of, of the derivative of the corresponding asset or decrease of the prices of the derivative of the assets. So, the overall risk is this area which I have marked or, or highlighted using the hashed black bold lines. So, if I want to consider the overall risk or the loss in the monetary sense, it will be just be the total area as it is given. Now, if I consider the overall uh, risk from the perspective of, of the uh, dispersion, so you can have different measures. I will write it uh, down even though without going to the details how the calculation is done, we will come to that later on. So, let us have some patience. So, the considering the distributions of either small r which was the return or I am talking only, only ab about the stocks, I am not talking anything about the options or the forwards or it was given by capital R. If we have uh, the distributions of the returns as normal, 
So, our emphasis as usual was this, this was the mean value which was mean uh, mu uh, for suffix of r means the mean value for the return and you had basically the standard deviation given considering the normal distribution is basically given as sigma and, and the sub, uh, subscript uh, r. And I am using the, the, the symbols from the perspective of the, of the population without going to what would they estimate that would come out later on to the discussions. Now, what we, we, we do understand is the returns would be normally distributed and in this case using the corresponding very well known uh, risk measures are fine. In case if they are not, then okay, what, what different type of measures we use is generally standard deviation, variance, we also use the concept of value at risk, this I will highlight later on. We use different type of other measures like the sharp ratio and, and all these things. So, those are where, where these type of ratios which are important for the case that uh, the distribution mean normal, they would be true. So, these are the case where the distribution mean normal and we are happy we, by utilizing these risk measures. Now, what happens when you have non-normal distributions? So, non-normal distributions I am just mentioning, I am not writing it, so I do not want to overload now. You have basically different type of extreme value distributions, uh, which are uh, Frequence distributions and, and this uh, distributions of type 1 and type 2. But in those cases, it should be remembered, the standard deviation variances, variance means the square, um, square of standard deviations the value at risk sharp ratios would not give you the right results because there are problems in, in the main assumptions based on which we are trying to basically find out these risk measures under the normal distribution and under the non-normal distributions. So, there are four basic um, axioms for the risk measures which will come to that later on. So, as I mentioned about 15 minutes back, I do not want to overload now, I will basically uh, go slowly and, and take up those concepts later on. Now, the other risk measures which are utilized in the case when you have a non-normal distributions like EVDs cases, the ones which are, uh, are quite applicable and utilized, I will use a different color. You have basically the conditional value at risk, the expected regret expected shortfall, entropic value at risk and so on and so forth. Now, one thing should be remembered, these, these risk measures which are highlighted in the violet color, they are applicable both for the extreme value distribution on the non-normal distribution as well as for the case when they are normal distribution. Now, the reason is why I am highlighting it, because if you remember and all of you who are basically seeing this set of lectures, you are very well aware the concept of diversification. Diversification means I want to basically put, uh, do not want to put all my eggs in the same basket, I want to basically distribute the overall risk considering I am investing in different type of assets where the risk measures as uh, where the risks as well as the, the returns for these different type of assets are different and also is the correlation coefficient, hence considering them helps me to basically reduce my overall risk for the portfolio which is being found by combinations of different type of assets based on their corresponding weights. Now, in the case when we are considering these non-normal risk measures, uh, it is easy for us to basically make uh, the comparison considering that you would be comparing the risk measures using this, this so called non-normal risk measures which are as again I am highlighting are uh, shown here. 
but for the cases when normal both of these uh, this uh, conditional value at risk expected regret expected shortfall then entropic value of value at risk and the standard deviation and variances for the normal cases can be utilized so our emphasis coming back to what we are discussing our emphasis would also always be on the perspective that we are trying to basically minimize the overall risk which can be any one of them depending on what are our emphasis is so so the, as the pink one shows coming back to this this slide number 4 and the pink area shows which is highlighted here and i have highlighted in the red color this is the loss which will be which has to be reduced considering the investor thinks that there would be a downward trend in the prices and he or she has gone for a long forward position now the long forward position is combined with the short call so i am basically combining with the short call and the short calls only the short call would be like this i'm just using the dark red color this is the risk so the risk which is being faced actually by the individual short call would be this area but the investors thinks the prices would be on a downward trend so if i combine the initial area which was the overall loss corresponding to the long forward position and consider the so called profit because there is a profit because it is above the the x axis this is the profit for the short call position the overall risk now becomes i will use again use the same combination of the color which was utilizing for the combination was basically the blue one so this would basically be the overall loss it has been reduced or the risk which has been reduced by this quantum so what is that quantum i'll use a different color in order to highlight let me check it led to the green light green one so overall reduction has been this so this is not the actual determinist one this is what you think would be the overall reduction provided the prices were on the downward trend and you can do the calculations accordingly find out the areas and, and, and solve your problems we will come to the mathematical part as i am saying later on now again we consider the long forward so the long forward actual risk was this the loss i would be utilizing the word if i use the word of loss or risk interchangeably please bear with me you have to basically find out what is the context based on which it it is, it is being utilized so initially we have a long forward and the risk is as shown corresponding to the case the prices generally would be on downward trend we think so this is the loss which we consider now rather than for the short we are basically combining that that with a long put so the long put uh, initial uh, in position is this one so i'll use the highlighted portion suite so this would be the long put and again we think the prices would be on downward trend it can be can go up but our anticipation it will be on downward trend so the overall uh, actual loss once the reduction is there is this portion so the bold blue one which you can see 
is basically the combined one. So, you have reduced it. I am not going to drawing it the individual one for the, the uh, for the long fo put forward, but the long put forward had this. So, this was basically for the long put which was positive and the area corresponding to the, the long forward was this. So, the combined blue one which I drew before. Um, before I, I marked what was the long put and the long forward, the blue area would give me the overall um, reduced level of, of loss. Now, obviously, I can consider this area also, but this small this the, this small area which is there. But main thing is basically trying to compare that the long put and the long forward how they combine and you get a reduced level of risk. Now, we will consider the short for. So, initially what was the long forward combining with the this consider was the put and the other uh, short put also. Now, we will consider the short forward combined with the long call option. So, initially, so in the in, in the initial two examples, I was anticipating on the investor uh, was anticipating the prices would go down on an average, but now the emphasis is the prices would go up. So, as I mentioned that whether the prices go up or down that is Im, that is immediate, immaterial, it, it does not give us that yes for the downward trend of the prices they would be a loss and for the upward trend in the prices they would be a profit. That is not the case. Our main emphasis is that for both the cases what I anticipate and wh where I have formed my position based on that I am trying to analyze that whether I will face a loss or I will face a uh, risk. So, when I consider the, the short forward for a reduction uh, increase in the prices. this is the overall risk I am facing. So, this can if, if the prices really go up, it can uh, be a huge amount of loss for me. So, the whole area on to the right. Now, I basically combine with the long call. So, this is the long call. I will use the color as we have been utilizing. So, let me check the color. So, scheme which you have been utilizing. We have been using the, the green one to highlight uh, the one which was the reduced part. Okay, we will continue this. Now, when we come to the marking, so the overall loss coming out from the, the long call was not the loss, the profit which was there, which will commence, compensate the loss. So, this was basically for the long call, this was basically which I have already marked, this was basically for the short forward and when I combine them, the overall reduced portion is this. total and what the has been the quantum of reduction I will just I did not do it in the second diagram, but I will try to basically highlight it here. This is the so called quantum of reduction which, which you can theoretically assume and pictorially also draw as we are 
highlighting it here. So, this is the overall. So, considering and, and here you thought the prices would be increasing. Now, we continue considering the, the delivery price as x or x1 as the cases can be. So, this, this portion blue one which is marked in the pink is the reduced risk. Now, we consider the short forward, but with the short put. So, it was the long put initially in third example, this is the fourth example, we will consider the short put. So, the loss which we would encounter or the investor would encounter using the short forward and considering the prices are on upward trend. So, this is the loss or the risk. So, any portion on to the right. Now, you want to reduce it using the short put option. So, this is the short put option which I will mark first and then proceed correspondingly. So, this is the short put. this is what the positive one you are getting getting individually from the short put. This was the portion which you are getting from the short forward position and when we consider the overall thing for an increase the overall reduced risk is the blue mark one, the light blue one mark one and the bold blue is basically the combined graph which you have for doing for combining with a short put and a short forward position. And what is the what is the quantum of reduction which is obviously sorry 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 for that. You must have guessed and I am sure you have got it right the quantum is this one. So, we have considered all the combinations, all the combination in the sense two combinations for thinking that prices would decrease and two combination thinking the prices would increase with using one forward and one option. Now, again the same emphasis considering the options, but again the word which I am highlighting is the risk. So, we consider the following initially the person sells or buys an option can be either a put or a call whichever it is and then for reasons can be either for a downward trend of the prices or any on or upward trend of the prices or fluctuating of the prices between two levels uh, where, where we consider the prices as ST, then he or she think would try to basically minimize the loss or, or reduce the risk. As you remember in the in the first set of examples, we considered the, the strike price or the delivery prices as k with the corresponding suffix of 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and so forth and where k 1 is was less than k 2 and which was less than k 3 depending on how many such different type of options which you have corresponding to the fact that there uh, the delivery day in the time this price or the strike price was different. So, here we will consider x is the lower strike price, y is the higher strike price and if there are more than two strike price, we will basically put the suffix accordingly. So, some premium is paid or obtained depending on what type of options you are going through. Premium means the price P or C whatever we used in the symbol and with the corresponding suffix based on the fact whether you are is a put or a, or a call or whether it is a long or a short. So, long put, short put, long call, short call. So, it is important to remember the following. For a call option, we need to take action when you speculate the price ST which is the spot price at time t is equal to capital T would rise 
that is the price is an upward trend as the main concern is to highlight here is how to reduce the loss, reduce the risk. Hence, we consider examples where we first start with a short call option and that then add other combinations of the options to reduce the loss or reduce the risk. For a put option, we need to take the action and coming to the put, we need to take the action when you speculate or think the price is ST which is the spot price at time T is equal to capital T would fall. So, in, we had the call thinking it will increase, now we have the put thinking it is a fall. So, let me highlight it because as we are discussing it will be better. So, this is a call option thinking there is a rise. I am just using the colors as it is because once we have we have decided on the color scheme it will be better if I continue doing that. So, it will be easy for you to understand and, and for me to also make a, a, a linear flow of the discussions to, to continue with the linear flow of the discussion. So, we consider a put option where the prices would fall that is the prices on a downward trend you think as the main concern is to highlight how to reduce or the loss of the risk. Hence, we consider examples where we first start with the short put option and then add other combinations of options to reduce the loss or the risk. So, we will go one by one. So, in this example, uh, we will consider the options either to have a strike price of x or y. So, depending on where whichever you want to basically go first you can basically combine the other and once you combine both of them, add up both of them, you will be able to understand that how the risk has been reduced either uh, for an anticipation of the increase of the prices or anticipation of the decrease of the prices, which is prices I am talking about is ST. Initially, we have a short call only and the risk is as shown considering prices generally would be an upward trend. So, here in the first bullet point, the last slide it was, we were thinking it would be an upward trend. So, let me highlight the loss, again use the same color, this is the loss. This is the loss which is to be reduced as I, as I had mentioned. Now, a short call is combined with a long call. So, initially we had the strike price as y, now you basically combine with the strike price of x. So, the new one for which we are utilizing the color as dark red. This is a strike price of x as you can see here. So, the overall for the increase in the prices, there is a profit. So, this is basically for the, the long call, lower delivery price as it is mentioned, which is x. And for the short call, it was this. So, the reduced loss which is coming, even though it shows a profit here, but maybe the, if we change the values on x and y and I find out and write and uh, draw the prices P or C accordingly, you will see there is a reduction in the price in the loss rather than going immediately into a profit. So, main thing is to highlight how they can be done. So, the overall so this dark blue is basically the combined prices. <coughs> combined uh, movement of, of the of the prices of both of long call and the short call.
So, here I am not I'm not going into, into the total quantum of reduction which has happened that which I have marked in green, I will only highlight the final results. So, this is the reduced loss considering the short call and the long call. Now, you consider a short call combined with a long call. So, here the overall loss corresponding to the fact and again here the increase in the prices is what is anticipated. So, I will be repeating what are the main assumptions based on which you are which you are trying to analyze the problem. So, this is the overall loss the investor would face. on to the right hand side and here another thing which which uh, I had mentioned as we were discussing that these combinations whether you consider x or y would not change the general concept how you are trying to reduce uh, the overall loss. Whether you, you start with an option with a strike price of x or start with an option with a strike price of y that would not basically change the general tenant of the idea of that what we, we want to highlight here, that would always remain the same. That means, we want to basically reduce the risk considering prices are on an upward trend. So, initially we have a short call option only and the risk is as shown considering prices will generally be on upward trend, this is the red portion. Now, when the short call option initially we combine that with a long call option here higher delivery price which is y and the cumulative payoff is shown in the bold line which is the dark blue one. So, the overall total reduced prices I am sorry the loss is this area. <coughs> so, the, the concept of the short call option this I will I have been using the dark one, the later part was uh, the initial one was so the the combinations would give you the blue area where the overall loss is reduced. So, now this is the second example here where we are considering a short call is combined with a short put. So, and we anticipate the prices would be increasing upward trend. <coughs> so, this is the overall loss which you would be facing. So, loss which is to be reduced the red region considering the short call. Now, you combine the short call with the short put with a lower delivery price. So, it was initially just in the last slide 18 number 1 it was basically um, the, the, the price was x uh, was y. Now, we have a short put option with a lower delivery price which is x. So, the overall reduced risk which is shown in the light blue hashed area with the dark blue line being for the combined p of for this sh one short call and one short put. And if I consider, so this will give me uh, a good idea that how about um, reduction of the overall um, risk can be obtained. 
so you had the short call combined with the short put with the lower delivery price being added in the next stage. Now we consider a short call is combined with a short put and initially we have a short call option only and the risk is as shown and considering there is an upward trend in the prices you anticipate here also the initial strike price is x which obviously would be lower than y. So, this is the overall loss you would be facing if you had only gone for the short call. Considering the upward trend, now we have that same short call being combined with a new one which is a short put with a higher delivery price of strike price of y. Now the cumulative bold uh, for the cumulative payoff is shown in the dark blue line and the level of total reduced value of risk is the blue one and if you uh, see it that the total quantum of reduction which you are which you are seeing this so I am bringing the color green now the overall total quantum which has been reduced is this one. It will go down as, as you proceed on to the right. <coughs> now, we have considered the sh short put for with different combinations for an anticipation of the increase of the prices. Now, we will consider anticipation of the decrease of the prices. So, initially we have a short put option only and the risk is as shown considering prices which generally be on a downward trend. So, we think it is decreasing. Here the strike price or delivery price which is decided upon is higher which is y and obviously you can change it to x also and they have different combinations. So, the overall loss which you would be facing So, this red portion is the um, loss, so loss which has to be reduced considering that you want to combine the short call with now with the, with the short put you want to combine with the short call. So, with the short put option we combine a short call option and here there is for the short call the delivery price is x which is lower than y. And the cumulative payoff bold one is the dark blue one which basically combines both of them in the graph and uh, this reduced level of loss or the risk one for which we will again use the coloring scheme as it is is the blue one is as shown. So, what is the total quantum of reduction? which we have been highlighting by green one see how the overall area would look like that would depend on the price of this option strike price uh, which or the delivery price x y and and so on and so forth but it will should give you some idea so the green one is the total quantum of re reduced value and the blue one is the actually what had happened after the reduction has taken place. Now, we consider the short put uh, combination with the short call considering again there is a general um, thought process that the prices would be on a decreasing trend. 
So, overall initial loss of the disk is the red one area. So, you want to basically reduce it for that you combine with a short call and for the short call the prices um, or delivery price would basically be now Y which is higher delivery price. So, let me read it. When the short put option we combine it with the short call option for which the delivery higher delivery price and the, then the cumulative payoff which, which is shown in the uh, dark blue bold line the total value of reduction and reduced values are marked accordingly. Total value which has been reduced to is this and the total quantum of so called reduction again it is giving a pictorial analysis how, how they look like. So, this one, so this, is, this is the reduced value. So, we have the combinations for the short put and the short call. Now, we consider again for a reduction one, a short put is combined with the long put. So, initially here the short put. So, initially as, as, as written down in the slide 26, we have a short put option only and the risk is as shown. So, what is the risk? risk or the loss whatever whichever word you are trying to utilize so the red portion is the loss which is to be reduced in anticipation that the prices are on a downward trend and remember one thing here uh, why so many combinations are coming up in the discussion is that if you remember I have been highlighting that initial whether the put or the call it can either have a strike price of x or y and later on we combine that with a different option with a different strike price which can be lower or higher accordingly. So, when the short put we combine with the long put and here the lower delivery price which is x because why I am saying that initially you had a had a I am not highlighting I am just, just marking the, with a pointer and hovering the stylus over that. So, this is basically the delivery price so now, now in this in, the, in the, when the combined case the delivery price is reduced. So, it says a reduced delivery price and the overall loss now and the total quantum of reductions are as follows. total reduced value, I will only highlight the relevant portions. Obviously, theoretically or practically depending on the values, you can get answers which are different, but the general concepts remain the same that how you, you how you can think that in case there is a redu reduction in ST downward trend, what will happen. So, this is the total re reduced value and the total quantum of reduced total quantum the difference is the green area. So, when the short put option is combined with the long put lower delivery price the cumulative payoff is given as shown. Now, you have a short put which is combined with a long put again the anticipation is the prices are on a decreasing trend. You anticipate what will happen in future. Initially, we have a short put option only and the risk is as shown considering prices will generally be on downward trend. So, the overall loss for only the short put and here the, the strike price is x which is the reduced value. If it is very evident from the, the graphs, but I still I thought I will mention that to you. <clears throat> so, this is the 
actual loss which you are facing for the downward trend. Now, you combine the short put with the long put and for the long put, it is a higher delivery price which is Y. Now, again I will highlight the final reduced loss of the risk So, reduction in prices, it can definitely go on to the right hand side, these areas where again I, I am not marking, I am hovering, but here the main emphasis which I am trying to highlight time and again for all the examples is that what you anticipate. Uh, total so called quantum of reduction has been this and in all these examples, so I, I just uh, did the last example, all these examples, the y axis is always the payoff, the x axis is always the strike price, point one. Point number two, you can be imagining that what happens if we have more than two options with three different delivery prices and obviously, the prices of purchase or selling are different which is small p with the corresponding suffix. Yes, it is possible thinking that whether the prices would be an upward trend, prices would be a downward trend, prices are basically fluctuating between these two values. You can do different combinations to find out and get a picture that what you anticipate and how you can basically formulate your problem of trying to reduce the risk. Now, in 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 and we we I'll just give you the introduction, considering that we have about about seven to eight minutes for the discussion for this uh, lecture. So I thought I'll give you some introduction. Obviously, we'll start about the same topics in the next class also, but I'll give you an introduction. So we will consider that uh, and and cover is that what we mean by the binomial tree modeling. Binomial means two there are two upward trend on the downward trend and obviously, we can extend that for the multinomial trees and multinomial pricing depending on the probabilities of upward movement and downward movement of the stock price. So, in binomial you will only consider it can either move up with certain probability, move down with certain probability. We will also consider the concept of risk neutral valuation based on which you can find out the prices. And even though it is mentioned we consider the two step binomial. I will try to give you the concept of the multinomial one. So, how they look like pictorially and how you can utilize them to find out the expected value of the prices based on which you can take your decisions of whether you, you think the prices are increasing, think the prices are decreasing and how the overall loss can be reduced. Now, let me give you a, a general background. So, generally the stock prices are always fluctuating and uh, generally normal distribution for the stock prices are not considered. We consider the log normal prices and generally the concept of stochastic process of Brownian motion of um, one step, two step, this concept of the Poisson process, random walks, all these things are considered in a very simplistic sense. Obviously, for this course, we will keep it as simple as possible in order to basically find out how the prices are fluctuating and how you can, here it will be important later on when we see that how you can find out the risk, the overall payoff, payoff diagrams have been considered, but how you consider in the mathematical sense the payoffs for uh, considering the options are there. So, Whenever we consider the concept of Brownian motion, so if you remember in, in, in your school days, you have considered the, uh, the very famous experiment where uh, one of the famous scientists Robert Brown was basically checking how the pollen grains were vibrating randomly. And if you see, say for example, uh, sunlight is coming and if you see the dust particles, they are basically randomly fluctuating. So, we will consider uh, the, the, the mathematics would be based on that, but the idea based on which how we can consider is pictorially would be based on the fact we will consider the simple random 
walk and the Brownian motions in order to basically find out what would be the prices for the, the, the stocks. And based on this, we can basically find out the returns of the options also. So, in the binomial uh, two step uh, or, or say for example, for the binomial tree, we will consider that whatever the prices are, S naught is at time T naught and we will consider the prices keep increasing, increasing either it goes up or a down and the probabilities we assume that the probability of increase is p and obviously, at the sum of the probability is 1, the decrease would be 1 minus p. And we will continue considering the prices go up uh, in this way. So, the diagram which is given in only one step, if I draw it in details, we will come to that later on. So, you consider the time slots as I will I'll draw the verticals, I should basically mark it as a hashed one, state and space correspondingly will come, what is state and space we will consider later on. So, consider the, the as of now t is equal to 0, the prices are S naught. So, prices can either increase, I will I'll extend it and, and draw it and I will come to the explanations later on also and it can either decrease So, once and this is time period t is equal to 0, then you have, uh, I do not want to make it too cluttered, this is time period t 1, time period t 2 time period T 3 and it will continue as you go on to the right. So, once you reach and this probability of increase as given is P, okay, let me utilize at least let me draw the diagram. So, it will be easier for me to continue in the next class. So, the price is increase P, prices increase P. Then again from, from this point at T is equal to 1, again there is an increase in the prices. So, it will go like this, it decreases, it increases from here. I am considering they, they come to the same point, again it goes down, again it increases and these are the overall tree diagram which I can plot and it will go on on to infinity. Again we will increase on and we are considering the prices of the probabilities of the increase of the price of the decrease are in the simplistic extent fixed. So, I will only write down the probability increase. Obviously, if I go into two steps it will become p square if it goes up, goes up and goes down, it will be p into 1 minus p and, and okay, it should be 1 minus p. As I was meant, I was talking, suddenly it, it came to my mind. So, again it will be decreases 1 minus p and we continue in this case. So, what is the main idea which you want to do is that what would be the overall price S t or the expected value based on this, we can find out that how the pricing of the options can be done. So, with this simple diagram of the, the one step binomial tree, two step binomial tree and the multi-unual tree and also and use the very simple examples of the binomial tree in order to find out how the, the, the so called prices and the rate of returns of the options can be done. Main idea being that we will come back later on to considering the Black-Scholes model and how the pricing of the Black-Scholes model can be done and all of you must have heard about the Black-Scholes model in general. So, with this I will end this uh, 26th lecture and continue with the concept of the pricing uh, using the binomial tree and highlight few examples accordingly. Have a nice day and thank you very much.